Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ, and our podcast guest today is Brian, an architect and entrepreneur from El Salvador. And um, we're going to talk about three main topics today. The first one being recycling material and knowledge. The second one, grass material. And the third topic will be the unique experience which Brian has designed the last seven years uh, in El Salvador with by implementing bamboo and other techniques. So welcome, Brian. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, JJ, for having me. And um, yes, my name is Brian, Brian Cano. I'm from El Salvador. I'm an architect and we start uh, building with traditional system of construction since seven years ago in our project. Yes. Awesome. Awesome to have you here on the Think Bamboo podcast. Um, I found you initially um, by uh, talking with another guest from the Think Bamboo podcast, which is Ecava in Colombia. Yes. So uh, it's funny you, you were there too. So I'm going to put a link here or here on the Ecava podcast. Um, but basically, um, why don't you tell us the story how you or what your plans were and and how at the end you ended up in 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 the colombian mecca of uh, <laughs> bamboo design um please <laughs> <laughs> well this is um it's been a very uh crazy journey but uh at the same time i'm very grateful and to meet like people like you like people from ikawa that are very interesting and in, and in, building with bamboo or having traditional system of construction and getting to have like this a special network between all of us. And well, we start building uh, here in, in our project, my project, it's called Harawa and it's located in the north part of El Salvador in a place called Chalatenango. Uh, this place, yes. And and just, uh, you mentioned before, so I'd like to have, Harawa is grass, right? That's yes. like the connection there. And that's yes. also very cool because that's one of the main topics. So you've been implementing lots of different grasses. And of course, bamboo is a giant grass. So uh, just to mention there, but not exactly. to uh, just continue with the intro, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. Um, well, we start building um, on 2017. At the beginning, we wanted to have like uh, five cabins and like we wanted to have also a, an ecological village, but at the same time, it was not that easy as um, I was just graduated from, from college, from university and asking for a loan wasn't that easy on the banks. So my father helped, helped me with, um, with the first cabin, not with everything, but uh, <laughs> much as he can, he, he helped me a lot, even with construction knowledge. So more of the, the cabins back in the days, I didn't have the knowledge to build with bamboo. I wanted to build, but uh, it wasn't that easy. And I remember I saw like, like pictures and videos of Bali and mm -hmm. always have like this interest in, in Bali at the same time. So and we have to mention maybe that Bali is like the, the super world global mecca of, of bamboo construction, thanks to uh, Green School and yes. uh, Ibuku and all of those people who have been really like uh, the very first uh, in the last 20 years to, to like reuse bamboo as, as, as something just amazing. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> I think that everyone that it's um, like passion about bamboo and wanted to build with bamboo knows about Bali and knows about Ibuka and Green School. I think yeah. are the the first one that uh, that we know like globally. And then it's Colombia. Well, for for me, it's Colombia. Yeah, I remember. Then we start building. I always well, wanted to travel to to Bali, but be, I remember before pandemic. It, it wasn't that chaotic, so... And still very I, expensive, right? I mean, from El Salvador to Bali is like 10,000, 20,000 kilometers. It's like you're flying around the entire yeah. planet. <laughs> well, since the, since the beginning in the project, we wanted to do things different. 
and even because of our budget, our budget it wasn't that high, so we were on a very tight, low budget. And the first things that uh, gets in our minds was, okay, we're going to build something more like local, traditional, and we thought that it was going to be cheap. <laughs> that was the, the 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 first thing that that we thought, but uh. Uh-uh. It wasn't like Not, that. <laughs> <laughs> reality was different. <laughs> yeah, the reality was different. And even to find the people to build uh, in traditional system, it wasn't um, also easy. easy and it wasn't cheap. So um, I remember I started learning uh, the basic things uh, by the people that the craftsmen that helped us to build and the knowledge that my dad um, got since he was a kid, the inspiration of Harawa was his hometown where he had grown up. Uh, My dad always uh, talked to my brothers uh, about how he grown up in this uh, very Salvadoran village where all the the houses were little huts made from Harawa grass. Grass. And and maybe we have to mention here also that um, you are now in El Salvador, but you grew up in Canada, right? And then basically your family went back to El Salvador. So um, this is also interesting because, um, well, you have like a, already a, a very different uh, probably mindset than like people who just stayed in El Salvador. And, and uh, it probably has impacted you on, on like um, doing what you're doing now, which is uh, pretty, pretty cool. Yes. <laughs> in the early 90s, um, I was very little. Uh, I I was born here in El Salvador, but in the early 90s, before of the Civil War and all the things that were happening here in El Salvador, so my parents decided to go with all my my with all of us to Winnipeg, Manitoba, in central uh, Canada. But wow. the weather over there wasn't like El Salvador, so we we lived there for a couple of years and then. We moved back to El Salvador, and my dad bought this piece of land where I'm at right now, and it was using most of most of the time for farming, and somehow things started to go and and like all, like the puzzle that's come all together, and for me, um, I remember that I was, it wasn't that. I wanted to have like this project. I think the project came to me came to you. In, in, in the precise moment because um, I always wanted to uh, study abroad. I was learning Korean and I was uh, like passionate about studying Korea, living in Korea. And that was in my mind for a couple of years. Then before graduating from college, my best friend, uh, he was having... Um, online office of architectural design. So he hired me because he was having like a lot of projects. But at the moment that he hires me, like maybe for one or two months later, no jobs, no projects, wow. anything. And I remember that uh, he will also was giving me money because I was living at, at his parents' house. So I, I don't know, I was his bad luck charm or something, but um, I quit um, working with him because it was um, I wasn't having enough money. So I went to the States, then I came back to El Salvador, and Destiny, it's something very crazy. Uh, I was in, in this place in El Salvador, and I meet with, we, like, it was coincidence that we meet. And it was a previous client that I was working with, and she was told me she told me about uh, the house that I was helping with the interior design. Back then, I didn't know that the house was going to be on Airbnb. So mm. when I asked for for the house, she told me, "You know what? It's booked all months, and I book in this price, and a lot of foreigners are coming." I was like. Are you serious? And she was like, yes, I rented on Airbnb, just like fresh, just like that. And on 2016, I I didn't know what Airbnb was. So um, 
I always tell this story because two beers, five minutes of her time changed my entire life. Right. Uh, she um, showed me on her phone Airbnb and explained me how it works, and that was it. And a few weeks later, I was in in my in my bedroom designing uh, the first cabin. I remember I I saw a documentary of Wally, and that's when I click, and something in my mind changed. And I have I remember I did the blueprints and the design of the first cabin. It was totally different than the one that we built, and. For me, that was like the the school after university, like having reality. to to the reality and have having to deal with very uh, specific things, money, uh, the the Material. people that help us, materials, and not everything. It's like you design it, and not ev everything is going to work like like that. So, yeah. it was it was hard. It was a stressful. I remember it was seven months of hardworking but after that um we well we finished the cabin and well, the first I, cabin right yes the, the first, first one you have currently three cabins yes um, we have currently three yes exactly yeah. and with the first one uh, that we call it harawa because the type of grass that we were using all, also a uh, recycling wood and for everything the roof right yes for yeah. the roof it's an yeah. a-frame cabin but very open because we we were aware that in this part of the Salvador it's very hot, so we didn't want it to have more like um, like air condition or things like mm -hmm. that to climatize the 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 environment of the inside of the cabin. So we plan to build it according to the air and the orientation of the sun. Mm -hmm. So for the first one, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> it's easy when when I uh, when I talk about the the process, but it it wasn't that that easy. And I remember that seven months later, we start building on February of 2017, and we start renting the cat the first cabin on August at uh, the same year. Wow. Okay. And, <laughs> and most of the time. Um, well, we weren't like having enough um, guests. It was like one in two weeks or one two guests in a month. And I remember that I tried to post pictures, like the similar pictures that Airbnb posts on their social media accounts. Mm -hmm. So um, later on 2018, Airbnb posts a picture and we were the first one that they um, feature. feature on their yeah. social media account. Awesome. That, that helped really a lot. <laughs> helped us like entirely uh, a lot. And we were so happy that people were following us. People uh, know about the country. And back then it was still, um, El Salvador was facing a lot of uh, the problems with the gang. So mm -hmm. it wasn't that easy too, because uh, right now it's more uh, safe. It's very safe. And what is more... it the safest Latin American country right now, right? <laughs> Compared well, to all of the other yes. ones. Yeah. Well, it still has some problems like every country, but it's more safe than it was uh, when we started building. That's why we, um, we didn't have like a sign or something. We wanted to keep things like very low profile and we send like a, a photo guide to take the, the guests when they enter to the town and then take them through pictures to our property. Cool. But, <laughs> wow. But that's how we like started. Then um, we start building two years, uh, every two years. The, the second one was in 2019. Uh, it was before pandemic. And the last one, uh, it was on 2021. And then everything changed, right? Kind of during the pandemic, when after going to Colombia to to get like new inspiration and to see how this whole uh, how you could build with bamboo, right? Implement bamboo construction um, 
or was it already were you already focused on the bamboo once when were you hooked on the bamboo after well, because you visited colombia twice right yeah <laughs> it, well i'm going back on july it's going to be my okay. fourth time in colombia cool cool, cool. <laughs> and, awesome. and yes i'm going to ekawa uh cool very cool and <laughs> but i remember when in 2016 i saw uh pictures and videos of bamboo structures in bali i i fall in love of of the bamboo but i realized that it wasn't that easy over here mm -hmm. because the the bamboo species that i saw on the pictures are the ones that are not very common to find over here mm -hmm. in el salvador i know there are some ones in guatemala in panama in costa rica but not over here so i knew that it's not going to be that easy but i was so um focused on learning and having like new techniques to just like uh, like an architect being an architect it's like you have a lot of competition mm -hmm. and trying to like think outside the box and not like following all the rules that everyone is following it's, it's not applying, that yeah. easy yeah, yeah because they they teach you that in school so it's not like um a very you have to break like the 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 what you learned in university probably and and like yes. like learning korean right but learning bamboo <laughs> <laughs> true it's like breaking even stereotypes because um people think that being an architect you have to be in office you have to dress well and i do all the opposite things uh, i do the things by my own i try to do my research try to uh try to use very specific or different um materials not the the, the regular ones or the popular ones and i think when you uh, try to do things in a different way it's sometimes or somehow you become more creative of what you do you're doing or trying to do and also your experience becomes more unique because nobody has done it exactly the way you did it. So, I mean, this is like a added value at the end for also the, the visitors and the people like going to your place and, and enjoying of yes. those unique places, the nature there. Um, is it like on, a, on, a, on the edge of a mountain, something? Because I saw like waterfalls and... Uh... Um, there are a few waterfalls. We are on, the, on a mountain area. We're just next to the mountains, and but El Salvador has two different seasons. It's the dry season and the rainy season. The rainy mm -hmm. season we call it winter, but it's it, it's not like the the winter that we have in like in it's the warm north part winter. of the yes. world. And <laughs> yeah. but right now it's the dry season. All the mountains are very dry. Um, it's very hot. The weather the more. I always recommend coming uh, for people that visit El Salvador. It's better after October because everything is green, uh, like very lush green. A lot of waterfalls have waters. Um, and water is like an issue in El Salvador. You mentioned before that there is like not enough water and probably like bad water management and, and all that. So this is a thing you, you have been focusing also. Yes on your project on your side regarding probably water harvesting and and uh, uh, gray water black water um maybe you can also share some insights there um that would be uh interesting also in, in regards to bamboo of course because um as we know bamboo is also like a natural water tank yeah but um yeah yes um well since the beginning we were worried about uh, the water and how we were going to deal with uh, the water on the dry season, even the water for gardening. And so we were like very worried about running out of water in some specific period of, the, of time. So we have a lot of tanks uh, for, for that. We have like uh, our own water tanks, but we separate the, the the water, the water system that goes on uh, the toilet and the other uh, water 
that comes from the shower and the sink. We separate them and we recycle the, the water that comes from the shower and the sink and use it for gardening. Yeah, well, with the water, that's what basically we separate them and the ones that that came out of the shower and the sink are the ones that we use it for gardening. And so the gray water, basically. Yeah, the, yeah which the is the gray like... water we, we use it, we recycle it and mm -hmm. And also we try to plant different kind of uh, plants that don't need like too much water. And we explain to people that come that if you come on a dry season, you're not going to see the gardens like on the rainy season. And that's very normal because I think that for having like, um, and we explained that we're not a hotel and we don't manage all the things and we don't offer the same things that a hotel uh, offer we explain them that we are an ecological project and there are some things that we don't have we try to be very honest and not to sell something that we don't have <laughs> absolutely that's that's very good i mean that's how it should be yes ideally. and and right now at the same time we well i live here in in the project i i live here uh since last year i moved uh, from town from here and I love it. Uh, I, awesome. I don't like the traffic. I, uh, I think it's a better quality of life. And even when I have students that come and we do a, a very short workshop with them, we explain them that, uh, what is our, um, our vision of building, what is our philosophy also of living here. And it's not something that you set up just for people that come it's our daily life basically uh living in here and we explain that to the guests too that the the property uh, we share it uh, with the that you, the property is going to share it with the owners also my brother just lived next door his house is next to this bamboo structure but awesome. but yeah awesome. that's how 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 we manage uh basically uh, like those things and how we, we started. And, but somehow the, the journey with bamboo, I wanted to start it uh, like seven years ago, but I think it wasn't the time. And uh, I didn't have, uh, I, I think, and I'm going to be very, very honest, uh, I wasn't very mature enough to um, do it since the beginning. It's. I think, and I'm very grateful that the process has, uh, I have to wait like six years to start building with, with Bembo. And I think it was better because I, I think that I met the the people that in Colombia on a specific period of time. And for me, it's, it's, it's like the best thing. And even my friends, my friends know that I was so, um, obsessed with bamboo like they call it in that way so uh one of them sent me a post of this place in colombia in in, in antioquia in san rafael it's called taquara and mm -hmm. he sent me a post and the first thing that he was like you have to text them they are teaching how to build with, that, with bamboo that's why what, what he sent to me and it was on january of 2022 so I text them, but the workshop, it was going to be in two weeks, the day that I text them. And I was like, no, I can't. And I remember I told them the person in charge uh, or the one who uh, I was chatting with on WhatsApp, mm -hmm. the next workshop, please let me know as soon as you have the, the, the specific the dates. Uh, the days. Yeah. And that's how they did they text me back uh, a few months later and they told me uh, we're going to have a um, workshop on August. And I think it was on May and the, the same week I bought the ticket and I paid them the workshop. Wow. Wow. And so you started the first um, time we were in Colombia, basically um, you, you were there and you, you stayed like, what was it, 14 days or 12 days, something it like that? Was 12 days and the workshop lasts for four days. It was like a, a very general knowledge of building with bamboo 
I remember it was just uh, the introduction of the place that we were staying at. The second day was harvesting bamboo and treatment. And the third day was um, building a scale model um, that I, I love it. I love doing the, the, the scale models. And the fourth day was uh, built, helped to build like a very um, a small a structure. Wow, but that's pretty intense in four days. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> yes. <know. laughs> and after that, I volunteer um, in the construction of a school. That's where mm -hmm. I learned the other things that I couldn't learn in the workshop. And during the, my volunteer, they offer me a scholarship. That's awesome. how I ended up on a 10-day workshop on October of the same year. Awesome. Wow. So that's pretty, I mean, you just got the right place uh, in, in Colombia because the whole bamboo, um, from my point of view, the bamboo, like architects um, in, in Latin America, most like build like similar, like more square houses, like, like, yeah, you know, but where you went, Taquara and Icava, uh, they do uh, much more organic, like yes. unique things. So I think it's, it's amazing that you were there and, and, and had like this uh, firsthand um, inspiration because uh, I see your background right now where you're sitting also. This is like, if I'm right, it's like the kitchen. Uh, yeah, the, it is the kitchen. kitchen bamboo structure. Yes. And you have like this, um, 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 what is it? Um, it's not guadua, right? You have like other uh, bamboo species there. Yeah, we, we. I remember that I text uh, Camila and Urabá that are the ones in charge of Taquara because mm -hmm. in Colombia they teach me how to build with Guadua, Guadua but sí. over here <laughs> it's not the ones that uh, I find mm -hmm. uh, the ones that we use are Asper, Dendrox Asper Giant bamboo Yes, and yeah. I remember when I I was so um, obsessed and trying to see if I can find a place where they sell. And my last um, resource was Facebook, <laughs> the marketplace <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. But and, I mean, Asper, Giant Bamboo is, is, is quite um, like, um, even maybe also for what you're using it with the roof structure and all that, I think works pretty, pretty, pretty well. Um, because what was a bit smaller um, is less, uh, uh, you, you can lose, I mean, it's very different, right? But yes. um Actually, um, I mean, if you have giant bamboo, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, but the tricky part was that I wasn't uh, teach to build with Asper. Giant, yeah. So yeah. I figured out some things like the same way that building with Guadua. But every time I send pictures to uh, my friends in Colombia, asking them um, how to do this, how to do that with Asper, and even with uh, with their help, well, help by the way helps me a lot, and but it was a, a stressful. I think it's not that easy when you're a, like a student and then it's your own project, and you have to deal with some specific things that are going on their way of building, and even with uh, bamboo, it's not like the same thing building something on a workshop. With and like 20 reality. people. And Maybe we, we can also add the info that giant bamboo is endemic to Asia um, yes. and has been like uh, brought in the 60s, 70s, 40s, I don't know when in Latin or in Latin America. Yeah. And in some places like El Salvador, there is more uh, now giant bamboo than Guadua, which is the endemic bamboo of, of Latin America. Yes. But, um, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of work of, of like reforesting with bamboo also because it has been so misunderstood and so uh, uh, badly used the last uh, 100 years, probably, or, or 50 years or. Yeah, that's <laughs> but you're going to change that. And, and that's amazing, Brian. <laughs> I, I think that here in El Salvador, the, the, ba the common bamboo, it's Bambusa vulgaris, the yellow mm -hmm. one. And it, but it's not endemic either. It's common because people plant it because they say, "Oh, it's so beautiful. It's golden yes. and all that." But it's 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 also from Asia, you know that. And, <laughs> and over here, it doesn't have like a very good reputation because yes, people also don't know uh, when it's ready to cut 
or which part of the bamboo it's used for a specific thing. And when people don't know how to uh, work with the material, they're going to tell you it's not worth it and it's not yeah. like uh, you need it. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, it's, it's actually, it's everywhere. Even in Africa, the most common bamboo in Africa, and Africa is huge, is Bambusa vulgaris, so this golden bamboo. And, and you can do stuff, but it's, it's really not ideal for buildings. It's not ideal for food. It's not ideal. It's basically, it's better than nothing. But uh, on the long term, you really want to have other bamboos, which are better, more yeah, useful. The, the ones <laughs> that we find and we use over here are Dendrocalamus asper, mm -hmm. Guadua angustifolia, Gigantochloa apus. And the other one, it's... Um, the, the names are tricky. I don't remember the other one, but here in El Salvador, they call it uh, Caña de Brasil. Mm -hmm. And I think it's Filustakis, uh, the, the, the name of that yeah. type of, of, of bamboo, if I'm not wrong. Could be. Could be and yeah. so yeah. those are the ones that we use. Cool. Awesome. I mean, it's, it's great that you do have some bamboo, even you, as, as everybody, to be honest, uh, I think it's, it's an odyssey. Uh, everywhere to find bamboo and if there is bamboo you have to know how to harvest it because most people who have bamboo don't know and again there's like a lot of challenges there and then you have to know how to use it to build it so and it's how to like treat the bamboo. and how to treat yes. it exactly if if you don't harvest it on on the on the moon specific moons and all that you do have to treat it because it's it's semi-tropical uh, climate and um, depending on all the insects and everything uh everything could disappear pretty fast if it's not yes. uh treated or or well harvested yeah <laughs> even here when we build this one the this structure after we post it on the instagram account of harawa people start coming just by curiosity and ask if they can see it or who was in charge of uh, building it because over here it's not that you're going to see a bamboo structure on a corner and just like a just like that so i explained to to the people that come and visit the place that uh it was difficult to find and it's not it's not cheap over here i think it's it's not a uh, cheap material and they think that bamboo is very cheap and that's why they ask a lot of uh, things and they think that building with bamboo is going to be less than building with regular materials yeah, no, not yet, not yet. Maybe in the future when there is a lot of bamboo available, a lot of knowledge, and uh, who knows. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is probably going to take a, a while, right? <laughs> yeah, may, and even people don't realize that it's not uh, commercial material, and it's not that you're going to... Well, when I explain them, that how is harvesting and how the moon interact with bamboo, they make like uh, different kind of faces. And yeah, yeah. Most people are like that because they, they think like, oh, it's like funny, uh, blah. But actually, I mean, it's logical. Uh, the knowledge, a this is ancient knowledge, right? I yeah. mean, everywhere uh, people knew that and it was not just harvesting trees or bamboo. It was like doing everything, like even the, the, the hair, the nails, everything. Uh, yes. according to the moon because it, it affects everything so it, it was just logical and somehow we lost that knowledge and now uh, when uh, you or me uh, mentioned that people really do look very like funny or, oh why yeah the moon? and and they have different <laughs> kind of perception of you after you start telling that and even i get that from architects even here i believe even yeah, yeah. The ones that i study with i remember uh, I was in a, uh, the, this university invite me to uh, talk about my work and mm -hmm. how our, it was our, this architect approached me and he was like making jokes and somehow he was like, oh, it's because the, you talk with the trees and the tree tell you that you're going to build with this and that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think we have to uh, not care so much about that right now because there are always going to be people who, who who think that we're like 
2024 we're a super a high tech and all that but at the end if if you don't use the moon phase you have the same issue that in yes. in a thousand a thousand years ago <laughs> it's nature nature yeah. doesn't care about the technology uh, yeah <laughs> that's really uh, funny so um i don't know should we maybe um we could like switch to the to your instagram account i can share the screen and yeah. you can um um like do a little intro on the three cabins and then the two bamboo structures okay um wh where our viewers can see how how beautiful and unique uh the the experience you have been uh, creating there so okay. uh, let's go to the um here so this is the instagram yes here we are okay so the the first three are the first three cabins which you build before um uh, digging into the the bamboo rabbit hole right yeah Ryan? <laughs> that's true <laughs> so yeah. let's click the first one first one is the f very first cabin right yeah the, no this is this was the last one. Oh, this was, sorry this one is called <laughs> that is the first one the the okay. one with the lady yes uh this was the first one and mm -hmm. uh, that we built in 2017 and it's where everything started uh, this one it's called harawa also the cabin and it was because <laughs> the, the type of grass that that we were using that it was a, a type of uh of grass that people use back in the days uh for roofing and we tried to keep that uh technique but it was difficult it, mm -hmm. even for us um because no one was um alive that the person and i remember the person that came to the project mm -hmm. and tell us how to build it he was 87 years old and wow. he told us how his dad built his house wow. and to pick up some things was wasn't that easy and we managed to have our own technique and that's how we start building but Yes. So it's, it's yes. a roof. It's a grass you use for the roof instead the of roof. Uh, using a thin roof or a plastic roof, which is yes. very popular today. Uh, you have been recycling ancient knowledge of of uh, like hundreds of years earlier, right? Where yes. they used this local grass called harawa. Harawa. <laughs> yes. Harawa. Um, yeah. And and basically, you were able to find like uh, an ancient man who who was like one of the very last who kind of knew uh, 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 like something about how to do it, but you had to like uh, adapt it to, to the roof at the end because it's kind of an A-frame uh, uh, cabin, right? Yes, it's an A-frame a cabin. And it was, well, the design doesn't look like uh, a difficult design, but it was difficult because of the techniques that we use for wood, for uh, roofing. And... Well, the roof was the the difficult part. The tricky and, part, huh? Yeah, this was the, the the tricky part because at the beginning we have water filtered everywhere, and <laughs> I remember we install um, the harawa grass for four different times because we couldn't like find the, the a very good technique to install the wow. the material. Wow. So it's it sounds super challenging, but it's it's really like that. I've, I have some experience too. The natural um, materials are really uh, you have to to understand very well how it it works with the elements, right? And, and yes. one of the strongest elements is water. Water, um, as we can see in in your Instagram too. You have like in the center, you have this water video. Let's 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 check on that. I haven't checked that yet. Um, ah, it's. It's the roof the, there. Yeah, it, that's how we we built the the first one. Uh, we post this uh, video about our journey since the beginning of of the the first cabin, and then how we start building with bamboo. Awesome, and it's beautiful. I mean, I see the mini pool there. The colors, everything is yes. really, really. Uh, and then I comes think... the the bamboo. <laughs> The, there, oh yeah, it's super fast forward video, but it, there's like everything is in this video. Wow, yeah, yes, yeah. Oh, we have the, the roof and everything. Wow, okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, but let's go back to the other cabins. This, um, <laughs> so this was the first one. 
the one with yes. the pool in the middle the one, was the second one, this right? This was the second one, yes. Okay, this and you also mentioned one. that this is another grass you're using here. Um, it's the same, uh, sorry, it's the same grass, but we pick up a different kind of, of name for the cabin. We call mm -hmm. it pangolera because okay. it, here in El Salvador, we have uh, a type of grass called pangola. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I grow up in town, just in front of my house, uh, there was this piece of land where we play with the other kids from, from my neighborhood. And it was full with uh, pangola grass, but we call it pangolera. So every okay. time that we wanted to play, it, it was like, let's go play to the pangolera. <laughs> so I pick up the name because of, of that place. And it was also because of the, the type of, of grass, uh, pangola. Pangola. And uh, it, uh, earlier you mentioned, Brian, that um, you, you have like, what is it, 80% of recycled material in, in your cabins? Is that and right? Or this, In this one, we have more uh, recycled wood. We recycle between the 15 and the 20% of the wood. Okay. And, and sometimes when we see that someone is building in town and they uh, tear down the entire structure of, of the house, we ask, mm -hmm. what are they going to do with the wood? And some people, they told us that they can sell the good ones, like the good beams. Yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> there are other people that um, they tell us that it's for free. If, they, if we can pick them up like in the specific days. So later that we give them a treatment and we can see which part of, uh, the, of, the, of the wood we can use for a specific thing in the, the cabin, in the design. And that's how we managed to have uh, from 15 to 20% of recycled wood. That's pretty cool. That's really, uh, I think, uh, more, more people should do that. And this is like the, the last one. Yeah, this is the, the last one. We, um, I think we shape in a different way the design. We polish the, the design a bit, but we yeah. wanted to keep it a, a very open space also. And one of the things that I like that uh, all the windows and the A-frame has, we keep using it even with, with bamboo and I think it's like uh, the the signature of the design of the of every cabin each cabin is different it's very different but we try to keep the same line of design absolutely no and it's pretty pretty cool and I love it how it's lush with you know the the plants you have there the pool the open space um, it looks pretty welcoming to be honest Amazing job there, really. Thank you. <laughs> um, if I click on this one, will we see this This one with the bamboo? I think more, uh, if you go down, you're going yeah. to see the the ones that we have with, with bamboo. Okay. And This one was the food. Yeah. No, the other one. The next one, this on, one. The, on the right. Oh, this one. Let me see. Let's see. That's the kitchen. Yes, that's the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. So th this is the big, as I understood, you, you tell if it's wrong, but this is the biggest bamboo structure you have built until now after yes. your uh, sessions in, in Colombia, right? So yes, there is like exactly. some inspiration from a cava and from a taquara. Yes. <laughs> but totally so adapted with the giant bamboo because that's uh, the main uh, uh, bamboo species you have in El Salvador right now. Yes, that's true. We have like um, influence by those two um, uh, places, Ekawa and Taquara, and mm -hmm. we love how they use the materials, how they use the bamboo for the different environments that they they build. So we wanted to have it, but not like a, a copy, just like uh, the influence. And then we put it all together to make it more um, like flowing with our vision and our philosophy of, of work in Harawa. 
because for the roof, we also uh, recycle sink for the roofing. So 50% of the, this structure is recycled sink. So cool. So cool. And I love how it works in, in, at night. It looks even more magical with the light reflecting on the bamboo beans, bean, beams. <laughs> and beams, I'm yeah. Beams, yeah. I'm sure like eating there is, is like super magical, like eating in a, in a natural cathedral uh, with all those lights. And, and wow, it looks amazing. And it's like a T Thank structure, you. right? It's a tunnel. And then it yes. opens up on the side where we have like, that's pretty yes, amazing. This one, if I'm not wrong, has um, 12 meter long and it's uh, four and a half meters wide. Wide. And how long did you uh, did it take you to to get it like built? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, this one we built it on the rainy season over here, so it wasn't that easy. And uh, we find out that for building with bamboo in El Salvador is better to build on the dry season, dry season. because yeah. even the the bamboo got this um, type of uh, texture and color from the from receiving a lot of rain yeah, and it started good. changing it, it started changing the color um mm -hmm. a little bit darker mm -hmm. but this one i remember that for the structure it took us around three weeks to have the the the, the structure Stru but wow that's pretty uh, fast then we run out of material <laughs> and that's when well it, it was good because it's when the credit creativity show up because uh, we weren't sure about using a different kind of uh, bamboo that it was that you can find it very easy here in El Salvador. It's Caña de Brasil mm -hmm. or Filustakis and it's very strong and I saw that they use it a lot for this little huts at the beach so we thought that it were going to be interesting by mixing it and using it. And that's how we ended up using uh, Filostakis for, for the roof. Cool. To I, make I think the it, grid for the roof. It, it, it works pretty smooth. Just looking at it, it looks like really beautiful there. Um, this is the same structure, right? Or is it, an, no, it's the yes, same, yeah. It's the but, same one, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, and, and uh, it looks welcoming. And I imagine when it rains, the the roof is like really big so you have like uh, still the fresh air but but no water which is yes. uh, <laughs> we, we don't have like um any um filters of water or, or when it comes with the with the rain and mm -hmm. last year uh this structure resist uh part of the rainy season and it managed very well so we were very happy <laughs> about that wow Looks pretty cool. Um, Thank you. So this is the biggest structure. There was another structure you mentioned, which is the the and bath. It was the bathroom. It, bathroom. It's, yes, I think uh, I this have this one. No. You see? No. No. Uh, it's at the end of the video. The the previous one. Okay. Uh, it's like a yurt or yurta. Yeah. And. Uh, that was made for from the last parts that we were having of bamboo and different materials. So it's more like a, a structure made from 95% of recycled material. Wow, that's even more amazing, 95%. <laughs> yeah, wow. we, we, we like to recycle as much as we, uh, as we can even for um, small things to then like this type of scales and structures. And I think we wanted to keep that with all the things that we wanted to build in the project as well. Uh, yeah, that's what you mentioned, right? Recycling material and recycling knowledge, which is, uh, as we see, seen, both things which you've been able to implement so far, um, which is kind of cool. And uh, this Thank results you. in a, in a super unique experience. Um, uh, we also discussed this before. Uh, probably one of the very first um, uh, projects, uh, uh, like creating this uh, reality in El Salvador, 
and um, for sure uh, you're uh, for sure having uh, uh, I imagine probably booked for uh, uh, like in future like a, a lot of visitors there and you, yeah, you also <laughs> <laughs> you also mentioned you're like you're continuously building right every two years or something you're yes. planning um, this year we're we're not building any cabins uh, we're planning to build another one next year and mm -hmm. my sister it's uh, getting involved in the project so uh we're going to design one not made entirely with bamboo but yes we're going to uh start introducing bamboo to the to the cabins awesome so you're going to do a little bit of a uh, a mix of um bamboo with other natural materials probably are you going yeah. into um what is it, rammed earth or uh, adobe? Um, yeah, with rammed earth, we're trying to experiment. We just finished our uh, a desk for our reception, and we were very happy with the results. Uh, it was a stressful because <laughs> it was the first one that we were doing and preparing the 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 materials and having everything set up and then start building it um it was a little bit difficult even with this uh hot weather that we have over here but it took us around three days to finish it and so it's, it's the reception desk in rammed earth yes wow uh, and you have I, to share a photo with me for the well, blog I, article i don't <laughs> know if you are able to um Go on my. I'm going to share with you my um, mm -hmm. yeah. Instagram account, and because yeah. I post a uh, a video on my stories about okay, let's how see. the process, I'm going mm -hmm. to send it to you um, right now because uh, we just finished it, uh, be and I posted before um, having this conversation with you. Oh, so um, ah. okay. Uh, are you sending it as a message or? Uh... I'm going to send you as a as a message on, okay. on ah, WhatsApp. I see it. I see it. I have it. But okay, let's see. I have yeah. it. There you go. Okay, technology at its peak. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Okay, thank you. There yeah, we are. That's that's a story. Yes. Okay, so we want to see. But this. I think you're going to see only a few seconds on this at one. The beginning. Yeah. Yes. And okay. Let's. There. There. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So it, it's a lot of uh, really. Oh, again, again. Where was it? Here. Boom. I think you have I to got... click on the story and there. then go yeah. to my profile to see uh, the entire uh, video. Okay. Okay. We are. Uh, but I was on your pro this one. No. No. Uh, that's the 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 project oh. Instagram, but my my personal instagram it's ah, the that's one, another one okay yeah it is the one that i send you on, on whatsapp yeah. right now yeah there we go ah there we go okay yeah on yeah. the reel here yeah this one no yeah let me see yeah there is more here awesome awesome yeah i, I I still um looking at the Harawa Instagram. Oh, I have to change. Oh, I have to change. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I have to change. Uh, stop. Okay. Share. There we go. Let's do from the start. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Hagamos una and tapia. we finish it wow. this morning. Okay. So how how much uh, work was it? You need like like two to three people there, at, or uh, we were three three people three including huh? yeah. yes. Wow. So it's a lot of manual work, like uh, sweat and <laughs> muscles, <Yes>. right? <laughs> I I remember that with Taquara we built one in in a workshop, but I remember we were like around fifteen to twenty people doing it. So wow. it was it wasn't that hard, but but this one, only three people <laughs> building it. Yes. Wow. And uh, what is it? How much cement did you use? Like four to six percent or more? Or... Uh, with cement, only on the bottom for the rocks. That mm. was it. 
And wow. then, okay. we, yes. And then, um, I'm not sure what the name in English, and you can correct me. It's um, what lime plaster. Yeah, that sounds uh, lime plaster. Okay, so it's different than rammed earth. It's it's no, even more natural. One, one um, the color of that we use only on the specific uh, uh, size and type of the, of the tapia that mm -hmm. we see. The, the the white one it's only with a uh, well, in Spanish, it's cal. Cal, cal si. yeah, 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 cali, yeah, yeah. Okay, wow, but, but it looks beautiful. Because amazing, we, man. We, <laughs> we didn't uh, find uh, a lighter uh, color, so we managed to use cal. <laughs> cal. Sure, why not? I mean, uh, the the color settings is is kind of tricky, from my understanding, um, within uh, tapia. So uh, it it looks pretty. Uh, it looks pretty unique. I mean, that's the idea, right? So yes. basically, people come to the cabins, and this is like the reception and the yes, wow, this cool. is going to be the, the reception desk. And on the back, it's a uh, a wall made of um, bahareke. Bahareke, oh, cool. So that's like even more of an ancestral um, uh, construction method where uh, you use wood or bamboo and yes. uh, soil, right? And, and yes. plaster that together. Exactly. So it's beautiful. Wow. So you've been implementing here like uh, lots of very cool um, knowledge. And, and probably this is like, it's, it's like a, a real time um, um, ancestral knowledge museum experience, too, you know, for the I people who are into building. Yes, I think it's very uh, interesting when you visit the place. And that's a thing. That's one of the things that I think guests like that, that they can know from our knowledge. And we tell them how we build it. And you can see it like for on first hand, uh, everything. It's not just set up or something like that, uh, mm -hmm. or we use it like on a commercial way. No, we just uh, have it over here. And it's the way that we experiment it kind of. It's like a, a more like a experiment process in the project that it's happening. And we mm -hmm. try to experiment with different materials, even uh, earth, bamboo, and grass um as much as we can and a strong focus on grass because as as we've been talking now i feel like you've been using like lots of different grasses and also bamboo being giant grass uh, this continues <laughs> and it's very cool and uh, another thought i had was like i think it's cool also that you're on place you live there so people who visit the place you know can directly interact with you regarding questions and it's not like when you go to a hotel where you have like a hotel manager and basically they have like no clue or just like the basic knowledge you know about the place about the hotel and all that but i mean basically you've created a place so um people who are into this and are looking also for inspiration i would advise to to go there and visit uh, brian's uh, eco cabin in el Thank salvador <laughs> Um, we'll put the um, Instagram in the blog article link, and um, also the Airbnb link. I think we can we can we can place there. Um, and um, yeah, um, basically th those are your two main um, communication channels right now. Yes, that's true. Yeah, and on okay. TikTok, but it's more of my um, of my journey uh, with yeah. the materials and the techniques that we use. Okay, so let's 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 do the TikTok link too because TikTok is really kind of uh, uh, the interesting rising star here compared to uh, Instagram, which uh, has already uh, is is uh, getting older and older and uh, losing a little bit of the drive there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but um, okay, this is this is very cool. Um, so basically, now you're in the bamboo structure of the reception or the kitchen the kitchen i'm going the to kitchen. take you on a very um, small tour. yes please that would be too. awesome yeah let's uh -huh. move slowly so we can yeah. um, get a better perception of the the space yeah. you've created there and we have a tree in the middle wow. uh, 
I love that you didn't uh, get rid of the tree. You know, you just left it there, and and it it is it's still like living no. there within the the construction. One of the things <laughs> that uh, also we have it's that we don't uh, cut any tree uh, for building uh, each of the cabins or any structure that we have. We try to keep them and try to um, change the design for those specific things. Mm -hmm. Cool. Amazing, man. That's how it should be done. <laughs> and well, the, also, the yes. Yeah, sorry. Okay. The black, okay. the roof, is, is, is this some kind of plastic you have after? No, or you paint it. Oh, you painted the black. So you painted yeah. the metal black. We painted for um, more uh, aesthetic uh, um, visual. Visual, Let me see yeah. If I can change the. See? But, oh, sorry. Um, a critical thought isn't the temperature hotter when it's black inside, or doesn't it affect a lot um, when it's what, like. One of the interesting things that we did is that we have these holes over here. It's not put together. And uh -huh. so the hot ah, air okay. can go out and that's doesn't cool. keep it on the inside. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Oh, okay. That's like, like a fish a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I wanted to yeah. change for the other um, camera, but I think I can. But it's okay. It, it okay. I mean, it, it works. Um, we'll see later uh, what the final quality uh, will be, but uh, I'll try to, or we will try to share also photos of your amazing bamboo structures on the, on the blog. Um, and this is from the outside. Outside. Let's see. Wow, and the green lush um, plants really uh, give a very good uh, contrast to the uh, structure too. Yes. So cool. Wow. <laughs> and you have like everything there. You have like, what is it? Palm, coconut palm? Uh, and There uh... are some coconuts that my father planted a few years ago. We have mangoes, we have cashews, wow. and oranges, lemons. Wow. A lot of- Awesome. <laughs> a lot of fruits. Awesome. Wow. So cool. <laughs> and the lamps also are, are they built in, in like bamboo fiber? The, the lamps you have in your back? Uh, sorry? The lamps, you know, the, where you have the lights, the light bulbs? Uh, no. Uh, well, oh. one of them, it's with bamboo. This one, okay. uh, it's with bamboo. I think you can see it there. Uh... Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. That's wow. one. That one's made from bamboo. bamboo, and the other one, it's another fabric. I think it's called rattan. Yeah, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. yeah. And those are the 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 two different ones, cool. and we find out this other ones uh, that you can see like wood. Mm -hmm. Wait, there it's not yet in the in the in the video. I don't know if you can see it. This one? I see a lamp. Yeah, it's like round also. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, good. Okay. We find out the, on the property next door. So we cut <laughs> it and we ask if for permission and we cut it. And I always wanted to try it for uh, having like a, another structure for the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So cool. That's <laughs> real recycling and, and local, <laughs> like circular economy. You yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And I, I like it also. You're like implementing your family. You mentioned your sister, your brother. So everybody and your, your father also who uh, helped from the start. So I think this is kind of very cool too. Um, who's missing? <laughs> um, I think that that's, that's it. And uh, even um, my, well, right now with the, with the cooking, Mauricio is my partner and mm -hmm. he's a chef. And he's awesome, the one, awesome. Uh, in charge of, of the menu and of the, the, of the kitchen. So cool. And I'm not good cooking, so <laughs> he's the one in charge of, of everything <laughs> in oh, the cool, kitchen. Man. Cool. <laughs> cool. I mean, you can't be good in everything, right? You have to focus. <laughs> and uh, that's good that you have different people uh, collaborating here from the family uh, in this project because it's a, it's a long term project and um, you've already like been there seven years. And um, I mean, it's pretty amazing what you built. Uh, honestly, thank um, you. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, and, and it's pretty cool. Uh, also, that it's I think it's really the first project 
like this in, in that region. So as you mentioned, yes, in Guatemala, there's some. Colombia is like a little bit the mecca here of the, yes. uh, let's say, organic bamboo structure uh, uh, designs. And not all, like I would say maybe only 5 to 10% in Colombia because like most classic bamboo architects are, are just like weren't that uh, focused on on like natural designs maybe more like the, the classic circular or rectangular or square mm -hmm. designs which uh, i mean works like the, well the, too the traditional ones exactly the more traditional ones um work well too but obviously it's 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 more impressive and it's like much more unique to sit into something which is like 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 what you've built there <laughs> thank you absolutely absolutely um yeah so um did we forget something i think we've managed um most of the topics okay. right now my head is is full <laughs> so i don't know if on, on your side you have something you want to mention regarding the the think bamboo podcast or regarding bamboo within uh your project in El Salvador? Um... Well, I think that right now, even our country, it's changing a lot. And I think it's changing so fast. And it's nice when people come or we can make a, a small difference of construction that uh, it's happening here. And I'm very happy that even um, architect students text us and ask if they can come and I give them a small tour and we explain them how to use the material. We explain them how is our philosophy, how is our um, creative system that we use uh, to build each um, uh, a structure and also that we implement sacred geometry at the same mm -hmm. time. And for me, I think it's... Uh, I couldn't imagine that when I was a student that I was like going to explain even uh, thank you. Uh, thank you again uh, for having this space uh, and let me share my experience. I'm, I'm very grateful that this can happen. And thank uh, you a lot for sharing <laughs> all your insights and your story. I mean, I highly appreciate it. I think it's, it's super interesting for all the, the viewers. Uh, who will be reading and 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 like you know getting this inspiration saying oh i also wanted to go to bali or whatever but it's too far away it's too expensive i'm here and uh, maybe they will start looking also like you did more into options which are uh, less far away yes and and more feasible and at the end if if you want something you can do it and and just like keep on doing it right that's the maybe yeah <laughs> yes i think that one of the, the main things that you have to have in mind is how to treat the bamboo, how to use it, and how it works. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you can travel to Bali, because it's not Bali that it's going to give you the creativity to build. Exactly. It's, yeah. it, it's you that it's going to bring all, the, all those to the table. But if you don't have like... Um, like money or or well money of course <laughs> but i think uh colombia it's not that it's your plan b i think it must be your your plan a mm -hmm. because uh what is happening here if you're in the americas it's very unique too it's a, a different type of building with bamboo it's not like a copy of what is happening in bali it's um it's local material, it's endemic uh, type of, of bamboo that they're using it and they've been using it for uh, centuries, as far as yeah. I know. So the taquara you mentioned, or the, yes. the, yeah, the techniques, the local techniques which use bamboo like hundreds of years and, and still some houses or structures still remain, the ones which have a roof, right? Still yes. remain. So this is, uh, I think what, what Brian was mentioning. Absolutely, yeah. and and you're so right. Um, are are you maybe also like maybe in the future, uh, uh, thinking about maybe giving a bamboo courses regarding a building and that for like new bamboo or future bamboo students? Is this something you're into? Maybe. Well, it's something that we wanted to to do, but in the future, um, 
I've been asked a lot that question. And, and I think here in El Salvador, it's not, we don't have like a culture of traveling a lot. So not many people go abroad. And some of them, they, when they do, they, they do it by uh, scholarships. But uh, I know, and I was also a student and I, well, I, I remember that I always wanted to, to study abroad and I couldn't have the, the resources. But mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to have like a very a small workshop, uh, maybe this year, but not like a start like building with bamboo. Uh, a start with the uh, more, um, not the easiest one, but the ones that are going to help another student, students are more like our architectural side, mm -hmm. like uh, having a very small workshop for scale models, organic uh, scale models, how to use sacred geometry, things mm -hmm. like that. And then take it to another level of building the, cool. the structure that the scale model that you do and the uh, design on a structure. Awesome. Awesome. I think, I mean, there is, there is so much potential because we need this, this bamboo education or knowledge sharing, however we call it, right? We need it because there is not enough of, of it yet here. People, uh, as we mentioned before, maybe have bamboo, but they, they don't know how to use it and all that. And any place and, and even uh, when people, I'm sure, are at your place, they, they get so inspired. There is much more motivation than to, to learn how to achieve something like that or, or similar and, 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 yes. and learn. So um, this is really cool, man. <laughs> Yeah, we're looking forward to have like a very, um, um, at least short uh, workshop uh, during maybe this year or next year. Okay, well, we're talking there. You let me know and how we can help regarding uh, visibility and, and, and getting people from everywhere because Latin America is uh, is big. <laughs> and, uh, That's true. And uh, I think really uh, your place is getting into this niche of, of very unique uh, bamboo uh, places. And uh, just keep on, on, on doing what you've done and uh, things are going to get even better. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Brian, um, thank you again uh, for your time. Uh, no, we thank will, you. <laughs> we will publish this on uh, YouTube, on Think Bamboo, also on TikTok and on instagram and on the thinkbamboo.org website as article it will summarize a little bit for the people who don't want to uh, tap into a one hour or two hour <laughs> video uh, podcast but there are always people who who do uh, consume the entire podcast and even i get messages where they tell me oh why is it only one hour couldn't you like ask <laughs> more things <laughs> so uh, there are definitely lots of hungry people for for bamboo out there and um, I think it's absolutely worth uh, investing time and energy into it. So um, continue. <laughs> thank you very much, okay. Brian. Take no, care. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All the best. Bye-bye. Adios. Adios. <laughs>